Hey guys, it's Leanna and I'm here today to talk about A Little Hatred by Joe Abercrombie. Well, yes, I do have quite a few additions here. So let's just go through them real quick. Oh, if you don't know what A Little Hatred is or Joe Abercrombie, then you're new to my channel and uh, he's the bestest ever. So I have here um, the Ark, which my friend sent to me. I have the Goldsboro edition with sprayed pages. I have the Barnes & Noble edition, which is signed. I have the Waterstones edition that has an extra story. And I have the regular was whatever edition that was sent to me by the publisher. So which one should I hold up while I talk? The US cover or the UK cover? This one's very shiny. So, oh, maybe I'll hold up the less shiny one. That seems like a good plan. So yeah, I'm super excited. I haven't had a new Abercrombie book to talk about, like, well, since I started my channel. Uh, he hasn't had a new book come out. So this is very, very exciting. A Little Hatred takes place in the world of the first law. I have a couple videos. Well, I have one video that's about the first law, like world. Maybe that's it. I feel like my my channel is like all Abercrombie content all the time, but really honestly it's not because he doesn't have a, like a million new books to talk about. Anyway, the first, the world of the first law is the first law trilogy and then three standalones that also take place in that universe and then a series of short stories. And now this is his return to the universe. And this is kind of a continuation of the trilogy, but the events of the standalones, which chronologically take place after the trilogy are also like have affected the world. So you can't really, I mean, I guess uh, it's being sold as like its own new series. It's the Age of Madness book one. Um, I, I think you could read it without having ever read any Abercrombie before and like get it. Like you, you would know what's going on, but a lot of what makes it amazing and great is the nuance that you only pick up on if you've read the previous books. So technically you can read it first, like, and only. But I wouldn't recommend that because part of the joy of it is these characters that you either know something about, have heard something about, or they are the children of characters that you have heard about, know something about, or followed before. So a lot of the like subtleties and nuances to the relationship dynamics you don't have to pick up on them to know what's going on, but he's done the work of like building that into it and it's like an absolute joy to read that part. So to get maximum enjoyment, I, I wouldn't recommend reading this without having read at the very least the First Law trilogy, but ideally the, the standalones as well. So yeah, this takes place um, like 30-ish years after the First Law trilogy ends. And um, I guess it's kind of spoilery for the First Law Trilogy too, because there's some characters that have survived from the First Law Trilogy to be in here. So that means that they didn't die. <laughs> and that's a big spoiler in an Abercrombie book since people drop like flies. So this follows, I guess it also spoils some other character relationships. Well, regardless, this is kind of following the next generation. So you've got Giselle's kid, Glockta's kid, you've got the Dogman's kid, and then they're all in it too. Glockta, Giselle, and the Dogman. And then there's a, a bunch of new characters as well. It's not just rehashing the oldies into a new generation. There's new characters too. I mean, honestly, the part that had me most excited and it did not let me down was Santa and Glockta being back. Oh, I missed Glockta so much. <laughs> it's such a weird character to fangirl over. Like, I feel like most people are like, you know, my book boyfriend is Santa and Glockta. <laughs> but for, for real, I fucking love Glockta so, so much. And seeing him with his daughter... Uh, and his relationship with his daughter. Oh my god. It was so, oh, so well written. I was, oh, ugh. Like, I, this is why my rant reviews are better. Because I'm more articulate when I'm pissed off. I don't, I can't articulate why this is great. It's just fucking great. And it's not just Glockta. I really like the character of his daughter, Savine Dan Glockta. She's an incredibly well written character. Holy moly. Like, before I read this, I would have said my favorite Abercrombie book of all time is Best Served Cold. And probably one of my favorite female characters he's written is the main character in Best Served Cold, Monscaro Mercado, who's known as Monza. Um, but Savine Dan Glockta and A Little Hatred have dethroned those. This is the best Abercrombie book I have yet read. Um, and as you know, I'm a fan, so that's saying something. Oh, this book is so freaking good. It's taken the world of the first law, what we built up in the trilogy, the politics, the war, the everything, the characters, and built upon it so magnificently. And now he's telling a story that's more rooted in like industrial revolution, populism, that kind of thing. And it feels so relevant, but not in a way that feels 
too on the nose, if that makes sense. Like, I hate when I read books that are, like, trying to be relevant. It just is relevant. Like, it's telling a story that stands on its own. Anytime you'd read it, you'd be like, this is an excellent story. But it just happens to be so relevant for the times right now. And um, so in a, just in a meta way, in addition to just being in and of itself, like, an extremely well-written and well-told tale... Um, on, in a meta sense, like it just it's, it's resonating with me as a present day reader so much more than it would have any other time. Oh my god. Oh my god. The jokes are great. The like grim, dark gallows humor is fantastic. Once again, Abercrombie has like demonstrated his ability to do character studies like nobody else. Once again, most of the characters are not likable, at least not not entirely likable. Most of them, there's there's things that, about them that you find extremely problematic. Their selfishness, their short-sightedness, their like there's there's multiple layers to these characters. They're all so messy. And Glockta is is still Glockta, but also like he's he's not exactly who he was 30 years ago because that wouldn't be realistic or good character group development either. But he is Glockta. Like I still feel like this is the character and exactly how the character would be 30 years down the road, given his situation, his position, his job, his family. He is exactly as he would be. Um and oh it's so, so, so well done. I was a little nervous about like new characters in the first law, about returning to this world and just being like it feeling kind of trying to force more into a world that everything's been told already kind of thing, you know, like squeezing out on one more. But this is like its whole new thing. And it is, I can't wait for the next book. Oh my god, like I know this just came out and I read it like in two seconds. But I need the next book now because, oh my god, oh my god, it's just so fucking good. I don't, can I try, I can try to be more articulate, but really it's just if you love Abercrombie and you love the way he writes, if you love the way he writes characters in a way that is layered and complex and they surprise you, if he, he writes stories and plot lines that like they're intricate and complicated, but they're not constantly like gotcha type twists where it's a twist to be a twist. Like it's so well constructed and so rooted in like, grim and and jaded realism that it's oh my god it's just masterful and and watching the pieces of it you can't really root for any particular side because all the sides are equally flawed and you're just watching it unfold and, and it's like watching a master conduct an orchestra of depravity it's a symphony of cynicism it's incredible um yeah again like the rich people are insufferable and rich and selfish and short-sighted but the poor people are insufferable and selfish and short-sighted and all these conflicting and sometimes aligning but more often conflicting goals of the different moving pieces oh my god it's just so well constructed and well told amazing characters amazing writing because i've talked about that before joe abercrombie's prose is also just artfully written and a joy to read because he just tells it well in a way that you want to read it. Oh my god, this book was amazing. Like, I was worried. I expected it to be one of the better books I've read this year. Like, I, I never, I don't think Joe Abercrombie is capable of writing a bad book, but I was like, coming back to the first law world, kind of like with the Iron Gold and going back to Red Rising world, I was like, is this a good idea? And then Iron Gold turned out to be my favorite, and a little hatred has turned out to be my favorite. So, at least in these two cases, returning to the world was a great idea. <laughs> I apologize for doubting you. This was more than I could have ever imagined or hoped for. I expected it to kind of be more of the same, which is great because I loved it before. So more of same is going to be fine because I liked it. But this was its own thing, but also so, so utterly Abercrombie. Ah, <laughs> oh, ah, oh, this is... A six out of five stars. I just, I kind of want to read it already again because I don't have anything else to do until the next book comes out. Maybe I'll just read all the first Law World books again and maybe by the end of that reread, the next one will be out. We can hope. Let me know in the comments down below if you're an Abercrombie fan, if you've read A Little Hatred already. I read it like the moment it came out. Um, I started reading the arc of it before it came out, but I read the bulk of it after it came out. So I've been kind of sitting on this review for a couple weeks. Um, and by the time this video is going up, I think it's going to have been like well over a month since I read it. Um, so it's been out. So you had time is what I'm saying. <laughs> like if you haven't read it, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> read it. <laughs> it's so good. Oh, after so many disappointments this year, like I was so let down by so many of my favorite authors this year. Again, so I was like the curse of 2019. I was like, please don't let Abercrombie 
also be victim to this curse. Like, please let his new book be the exception. And, oh, it's the exception that made all those disappointments worth it. If the price of this book was hating all those others, I will pay it twice over. This book was everything. And now I've oversold it. So when you pick it up, you're going to be disappointed because I've overhyped it. So forget everything I said, except the part where I said to read it. <laughs> but like go into it like me, expecting like a little more first love. I guess, you know, that's that's good. Like, it'll be fine. Go into it like that is my recommendation. <laughs> go into it expecting a decent book and then come back and be excited and blown away with me. <laughs> Let me know anything and everything in the comments down below. I post videos on Saturdays. So like and subscribe and I'll see you next Saturday.